Okay, in this video, I'm just running a simple animation using rigid body dynamics again. And what I have is a bunch of cubes up here, right here in the scene. And they're going to fall from the sky. And they're going to run into this kind of water wheel that I built right here. And this is a rigid body dynamic object like this. And I have it constrained by these two little pieces I have in here. They're not even perfect little circles. I just have it in here enough to constrain it and long enough so it can't easily slip out. Ex of course, based on um, the mass of this object, you know, when this falls, you have to multiply that times the acceleration of gravity, and then you can determine it, how much force it's imparting when it hits here. So when it first starts, it's not falling such a great distance, so it's not imparting a great deal of force, and so the simulation will actually be okay and it's relatively stable but for the objects that are way up high in here they're f falling a much greater distance so they have much more force when they actually hit it and then the stability of the simulation starts falling out so I didn't explore it beyond that as far as maybe the number of steps in the simulation that I would have to take for that much force but I in general that's the, this was just the test to be able to prove the concept and then I'll turn it into more of a waterfall approach instead so they all hit with a a more gentle force because you can imagine in a waterfall I mean if you had a if you had your own water wheel at the bottom of Yosemite with a giant waterfall it might break the water wheel right so it, it all depends on you know the how much force is being applied so let's just run the animation and kind of give you an idea I'll show you part of it here so it starts off fine you can see it shaking around in here but then <laughs> as it gets higher up then, then it starts knocking it out. And this is what the real value of, you know, rigid body dynamics is all about. You can do cool physics-based stuff visually now, you know? I mean, it, it helps if you know, obviously, some math and physics, because then you know what you're looking for, and you can uh, put in the right amount of mass and the type of material and things like that. But it's kind of give you an idea, you know, besides just making cubes bounce on the ground or things like that. So in the next video what I'll do is I'll upgrade it and I'll make a real waterfall type thing out of it. And um, But what it means is that the, it seems to me the stability of the simulator is fine and that I'll be able to do all kinds of cool things like moving gears so I can make a vehicle move around the ground based on a engine piece or something like that. And then you can have really some really cool fun. You know, you can have a lot of cool mechanical effects going on and the simulation is not just based on some keyframe that you're eyeballing because that you know well that's just not that realistic in the most part for the most part all right well that's it for now and i'll see you in the next video